Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to talk about how you determine if there's output voltage present on a Von Duprin PS873. The PS873 is a discontinued power supply, but there are many of them still out there, and there's still a call and demand for them. And it's because they are a, they were a power supply, they are a power supply that could provide the 16 amp inrush to solenoid driven electric latch retraction von Duprin devices. So let's talk about that. So first of all, before we get started, I'm going to ease into the power supply and how we check for voltage with a PS861 in the sense that it's quite frankly just a little bit less of a power supply in the sense of really understanding it. Um, so first of all, this is an actual call from a customer who says, you've sent me this power supply and there's no voltage present, uh, no output voltage present. And um, the PS861 that I have here doesn't have as, uh, it has a couple of less things to be concerned with to determine whether or not there is voltage present, um, namely any jumpers uh, that need to be configured correctly. The client could possibly be missing the jumpers and that could account for uh, the lack of output voltage. So the PS861 is a, was a one amp power supply and this sort of power supply would be perfect for, you know, anything that's going to be requiring three quarter amp or less, uh, you know, uh, electric strike, things of that nature. And I've also picked this one off the shelf because it already has a handy plug uh, connected to it. So I'm going to plug this in and then we're going to demonstrate how to check for output voltage. There won't be very much to be concerned with uh, in terms of difficulty of doing this. And I'm going to then ease into how it might be easier for the client to determine what they're working with. So first of all, we've it's plugged in and now we get an, a red LED light. Now I don't know what that means. I know what it means of other power supplies. Um... Obviously, I think that it means that there's voltage. I pause that because I wasn't sure if it was to be red or green, but the installation instructions here clearly indicate uh, red LED, which is what it says at number seven. Close breaker to turn on the PS861, the red power on LED should be illuminated at number seven. Okay, so we've got we've got power here. So we're obviously going to want to be mindful of the fact that there's now power operating in this. Uh, so, be, and I also chose this because it's such a super simple power supply. There are only two, well, there's, there's just DC output right in the center at the bottom. There's positive and negative. There's not, there's nowhere else to check for output voltage. So the bottom line is I have a my multimeter or a multimeter here I'm going to turn it on now this multimeter is not the one that I normally use um, because it's just more cluttered and when I uh, make a video I like to use a less cluttered uh, multimeter um, but the bottom line is there's a really it, it's just less sophisticated I suppose we're checking for DC voltage and that's the symbol for DC DC volts I've got it set to 200 because I want to set the range to be the next highest amount of what I expect to see. I expect to see 24 volts is what I expect to see. I don't know if this is configurable 12 or 24, I just don't remember. Yeah, it most definitely is. I don't know how to configure that for 12 or 24 volt because, and it's going to be the theme of what I'm talking about, I haven't looked at the installation instructions. The point being is the client said there's no output voltage. Okay, have we looked at the installation instructions? Let's start with that. So I don't know what it is, but I'll go back and figure it out. So basically I'm going to take my probes and I'm going to connect them to the DC output voltage. Uh, 
Um, black goes to negative, red goes to positive. Remember that any way that you... Sorry, just looking to see which is which. We've got 24 volts. So this is configured, I mean literally, this is configured for 24 volts. This is how we check for output voltage. You send someone a power supply and it doesn't work, well, start checking. So where I ought to have checked would be for incoming power, which means, oh boy, which means what we ought to have done first is check for incoming voltage. And that would have been this symbol here. Volts with a squiggly line. Set it to the next highest value that we expect to see. And on here we have 2, 20, 200, and 700 for AC voltage. So I've got it set to 200, the next largest value of what I expect to see. I expect to see 110, 120. I'm going to get inside of where the input is coming. There you go, 123, 124 volts. So I know I've got incoming power. I can set my, now if I was doing it in the proper order, I would then set my multimeter to check for output volt, DC voltage. I've set it back to the higher of the two ranges and just doing again what I've already done. Okay, 24 volts. We know that this power supply is producing voltage. Now, the question is, is how do we configure it for 12 or 24 volts? And that would, quite frankly, be a, just a trip to the, uh, to the installation instructions. So let me pause this video while I do that. That took about five seconds. I just didn't look closely enough. And this could very likely be the problem that the client's having. My theory is, right at the top, right here, that's where the jumpers are. And they're referred to under the lid, right here. And it says in the instructions down below, you have to set the jumpers. Number three, select 12 or 24 VDC output selection. So I'm gonna power this off. I'm going to unplug it, and we still have a little bit of glow on that red LED. Now it's completely out. At this point, I'm going to remove the jumper. All right, I've removed the jumper. Now, the test is, is what voltage does it produce when you don't have a jumper connected? Okay, so there is no red LED. And I've, you might be able to tell I've never done this before with this power supply. So there's no red LED. Let's check for incoming voltage because that would be appropriate to do. I've got it set to 200 um, volts AC, my maximum range. I've got incoming voltage. Let's set it to our maximum range for DC voltage. 200 on the DC volts. Very, very little voltage. 1.1 volt. That would absolutely explain why the client that would be a, that would be an explanation as to why the client's not getting voltage it doesn't mean that is the explanation it could just be a bad power supply i'm putting the jumper back in i've 
plugged it back in. I'm still set on DC voltage. I'm going to make sure I'm getting 24 volts now. There we go. Nope. My probes were just jumping around. 24 volts. Okay, we've established that we have voltage working on a PS861. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that cable, that cord, that hookup cord, to the PS873 that we want to test because that's what the client has called and say, said that they don't have any output voltage. So let's help them determine why that is the case. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. I have my PS873 here wired with the plug-in connector. Okay, so we're ready to go. We're ready to plug this in and check. The bottom line, though, is what I was referring to earlier is somebody buys a piece of equipment that's several hundreds of dollars and there's no output voltage. Okay, did we look at the installation instructions? That should be everything that we do. So let's, because I've, you know, I've learned about this power supply over the years and I've forgotten everything I learned and then I learn it again and then I forget. So I need, even someone who deals with power supplies on a daily basis needs to look at the installation instructions. So let's switch to the screen view and let's just, let's look at those first. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. All right, let's look at a PS873 uh, set of installation instructions. And a lot of this is also underneath the uh, lid. It's, it's, as you saw earlier, it's under the cover. So the instructions, options boards, EL wiring instructions, battery backup. So let's just look at installation instructions. So what are, we, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for things that we should be aware of. And much of what's in here, we're probably not going to need to be very aware of it, at, just for testing for output voltage. The options boards, the fire alarm interface board, we, battery backup, we don't care about that stuff right now. At least I don't think we do. The enclosure size, operating temperature. Okay. So what I like about these older installation instructions is step one. Step two, really nice and big. So mounting the enclosure, great. AC wiring, we've connected our AC wiring. Ensure that the breaker is open. That means that the power is turned off. For supply connections, use suitable wire for at least 90 degrees centigrade. Okay, not a problem. Select the output voltage. So this is pretty handy. And step two, number three, select output voltage. So immediately we've got to be setting our output voltage. And, um, you know, the question becomes, is our output voltage even selected? DS1. Ah, yeah, right here, step three. So, I'm, okay, DS1, I'm not, igno please ignore DS1. I'm not, that, that's, I, I group that in. Number three, select output voltage, right up here. Up in the corner, do you have the jumpers? We've already established without a jumper, it's not going to work. And I can look inside of here, and I can see that the jumpers are, not, not only are they present, but they're connected at 24 volts. So we know we're looking for the presence of jumpers and that they are in the configuration that we want. Connect the AC voltage with the two black, uh, black and white leads, or just connect them, which I've already done. Close breaker to turn on power supply, which just means allow the, plop, the power to flow. Verify the green LED, DS1, is illuminated, in indicating output voltage is present. So now we're on to two things. Are there jumpers? And do you have a green LED? If you have a green LED, the board's telling you you're good. So device wiring, let's just scan through the rest of this to see if there's anything else that we need. Uh, when you're going to be connecting hardware to your DC output, okay? Here is a fail-safe electric lock. An example would be a magnetic lock. It would be normal for a 
switch to be in the normally closed position, meaning that um, normally closed, to me, the drawings are a little bit unconventional in the sense that a normally closed switch, um, not when it's taken out of the box, is going to allow current to flow. Okay, and that's what you need for a magnetic lock to 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 stay to retain, you know, security on the door. You need to have that locked. When the power is cut, this is going to fall, fail open. But what's strange is they're showing this in the influenced state. So, you know, it's it. There's power running to it um, for this to occur. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is this is a magnetic lock. It's fail safe, meaning on the absence of power, this is going to fail open and this will be unlocked. The fail secure, like an electric strike or an electric latch retraction exit device, it'll be the obvious. Uh, pardon me, it'll be the opposite. When this is influenced, this will close, allowing you to unlock this. And then upon the loss of power, this will fail open as it's seen here. So these two, to me, don't make a lot of sense to each other. But understanding the functionality of what needs to occur leads you to only one sort of conclusion as to how it can work. Battery backup, this is not important for us. We're not doing a battery backup testing for output voltage alarm uh, fire alarm input automatic reset we don't need to talk about that automatic or manual reset basically is if there is a fire alarm condition upon that reinstatement of power from the fire alarm panel power could automatically flow through this uh, power supply re-energizing every load that's on the circuit or you can force it to be manually reset, um, which may be what you want. Fire suppression systems in kitchens require manual resets. Once you restore the power, you then have to go to the manual reset relay and, and, and voluntarily, intentionally restore uh, a closed circuit to the system. An option board for a uh, multiple zone, we don't need to talk about that, except... There's jumpers here. Well, the jumpers aren't important. It's just talking about what is being controlled, individual or sequential, um, options boards, how you would wire options boards. Okay, operation summary, key lock, don't care about that. Now, what's interesting is under troubleshooting, nowhere here does it say there's no output. There's no output voltage. So, um, you know, there's no output voltage. Uh, would be good to have here. So what would be the causes of no output voltage? Obviously, no input voltage is where we would always check first. With this, we would obviously check for the presence of a terminal. We would obviously look for a green LED. So that's what we're going to be checking for on this. So let's switch back to the, to the uh, camera view. And let's actually test this client's power supply. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new to uh, reacquaint myself with something or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So we've begun with the proper first step. We've read the installation instructions. So now we know that we're looking for missing jumper, input power, and a green LED. That's all that really we could harvest out of the installation instruction. So let's let's test it. Let's find out what the story is.
going to plug it in. And I do not see a green LED there. Very interesting. Let's test for input power. We're going to set that to uh, AC voltage. 200. Oops. It helped to turn it on first. Okay, we've got good input voltage. Okay, we don't have a green LED. Let's turn it to DC voltage, 200 on the DC volts. We don't have output voltage. Okay, so what could be the cause? Well, we know we've got AC voltage coming in. And we can see that our our jumpers are set correctly up here. They are set to 24 volts. Right there. Sorry. Right there. Let's turn this off. Ah. Uh, I wonder if having a add on board is what could be the cause of that. Maybe now, because I've got an add-on board, this is not to... Well, there should still be green. Let's unplug this and remove the option board. We're unplugged. Okay, we've removed the option board. Let's see if that changes anything on what we're doing. We're still set to DC voltage. I knew by that negative voltage that I had the terminals crossed. We're getting next to no voltage out of this. Uh, okay, so let's unplug it and we'll check for... The fuse looks like it's intact. We'll check for continuity on the fuse. Um, and we will remove... And we'll check for continuity on the fuse.
I have it set to continuity or unplugged. If you can hear that tone, it's telling me that the fuse is good. You should have been able to hear that. So I know the fuse is good because I've checked for continuity. And these jumpers look like they're in perfect shape. I've switched them to 12 volt. Let's just test that. I've got my unit set back to yeah that made no difference changing those jumpers not at all I'm gonna put the option board back in and see if we get any voltage anywhere getting almost no voltage anywhere. We're set on 12 volts. Ah. We've got a fire alarm panel stuck in here. Let's remove that. This is in the cut position, the cut status, which may be the instance, the instance when you require a manual reset. Still getting very little voltage. Yeah, I've got proper AC voltage coming in. I do not know what the problem is. Hmm. We're getting zero voltage. Let's pause this video. Eve, what I'm led to believe based on reading the installation instruction, the fact that we're getting no voltage 
I mean... <laughs> eliminate... The, the saying was something to the effect, eliminate every possibility, no matter how far-fetched it seems, and what you're left with is the cause. Um, I am not going to tell you where that comes from. That would be far too nerdy. Uh, so in the, it, it does, you know, it does seem to me that there's there's something related. Without the fire alarm, obviously, um, this is doing what it should be doing in a fire condition. So, okay, I've got the power disconnected. And what I want to do is I want to install the fire alarm board. And I think we might be onto something with this, or at least worth testing. That's going to go up over here. It's a little difficult to do it upside down. All right, so it's plugged back in. It's not screwed down. Now, what's tipping me off is the fact that the board, it, ouch, the board is notched for it, as you can see right here. Oops. The board is notched for it, meaning it's in the notched condition. Right at the tip of my finger, it's notched right there. Okay, you can see it's notched. I put the board back in. Now, looking at the installation instructions, there ought to be a jumper between here. Install a board. Connect normally closed fire alarm contacts as shown right here. There's no jumper on the board. So let's let's plug this, let's let's get this turned up. Let's plug it in and let's just temporarily jump. I've just got a wire here, that's all a jumper is. Those two contacts. No LED. I've not tested for power, but I'm not concerned about doing that right now. Uh-huh. Did you hear it? Yeah. Watch the green LED. If you can, get my hand out of the way. Green LED is on. Right there. Now it's off. Okay. Now let me remove the power. Let me wire in this jumper properly. I'm going to remove the board from the device. got a jumper connected. We're plugging it back in. We're initiating power. We're, I mean, we're going to plug it in. Our jumpers are set to 12 volt. Let's just leave it at 12 volt. Who cares for the first test? All right. Green light, the green LED goes on immediately. I'm going to set it to... Uh, well, 12, so I'm going to set it to 20, because I'm only expecting to see 12-volt um, DC. Uh, 
Okay. Got to do that, Hank. We're getting a negative value that tells me that I've got the terminals reversed. The leads. 13.62 volts. Perfect. It's heavy, and that's normal for power supplies to be heavy by 10 volts because of the loss. That has explained the mystery of why there's no output voltage on this unit. Because there was no fire alarm panel and that and that, that was notched is the bottom line. So now what I'm going to end up doing is sending to the client a short video. I'm going to send them I know that the client does not have the fire alarm uh, board, so I'm going to send them the fire alarm board, uh, and I'm going to send a video showing how to um, jump it. Let's switch to the screen view one more time, and let's take a closer look at those installation instructions. Regarding the links to ads that you might see in this video, we do apologize for any interruption to a smooth viewing experience. And hopefully the ads that are being presented to you are related to the base product. And if there is something, feel free to click on those and perhaps consider taking a look at what that other advertiser is promoting. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so we're back to where our installation instructions are. And that fire alarm input was on page four, I think. Yeah, the 873FA option consists of... And by the way, the client was sent the FA. Consists of one printed circuit board that plugs into the PS873 power supply. In the event of a fire alarm, in the event a fire alarm is active, this board will remove power from the PS873 and any logic board output. I don't want, <laughs> the board wasn't in there, so we weren't getting any output. The fire alarm input board can be configured for automatic or manual. Automatic. After a fire alarm condition is terminated, the 873FA option will immediately restore power to all loads. The 873FA is shipped in the automatic configuration. Okay. Manual. After a fire alarm condition is cleared or following a power outage, it will not restore power until a reset device has been toggled. Step one. Make sure there's no power. Disconnect batteries. Step two, locate hole labeled E3 cut when fireboard is used and cut. This has been cut. And that's what tipped me off that the thing may not work without the fire alarm board. There must be opening that circuit must then force those that terminal block to be utilized. I, I, I don't know for sure, but that makes sense. Configure 873 is automatic or manual as shown on the following page. Install the board. Connect normally closed contacts. That's what we did with the jumper. Restore the AC voltage and reconnect the batteries. The LED is on. Cut E1 on. So we've cut that. Connect normally closed fire alarm. Uh, contacts and normally open reset contacts. Okay, so in the event of a fire alarm, the client's going to, because it's already been cut, that means it's in the manual uh, setting. If you have a fire alarm condition, you've got to manually reset it. So for this client who does not require a fire alarm input, the only way they're going to get voltage turned back on, power goes off in the building. The power supply isn't getting any power. Uh, any power. The loads aren't getting any power. There are no batteries. Power comes back on. The client will still not have power. Restore AC voltage and reconnect the batteries, if you have those. Momentarily close the reset device contacts. The green LED will illuminate. So in a fire alarm condition, because there is 
there's a relay on the fire alarm right here, you're going to have to temporarily short COM and RST is what you're going to have to do. If the reset device are left in the closed position, it will not work. Okay, yeah. So you just temporarily set those. Obvious, well, not obvious because I'm not an expert at all, but there is a latching relay in here, which would explain why you have to temporarily close those. Um, a fun fact, there's a German manufacturer of model trains. They make HO, they make uh, Z-scale. I don't know what other scales they make. In order to get the locomotives to reverse, it's a latching relay where you send a lot of power to it and it will reverse the direction of the locomotive. It's, it's a latching relay. Um, mystery has been solved. Let's finish this up. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. I do regret if that was a bit too tortured. Um, that was live. I've never done that before. Um, and what you, what you saw unfold is exactly the path of discovery that I took to determine what was happening. So thank you for watching that. I hope that this will illuminate some aspect of what you're working on, and if not, I apologize, but feel free. Let me know where I've missed anything, and I'm happy to work on an answer to that as well. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.